Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore some wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at Modern Miracles, a blue-white control deck that takes advantage of the miracle mechanic from Avacyn Restored. So we've got Entreat the Angels as one of our miracle cards, which normally costs double X and triple white to make X 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying. But instead, if Entreat the Angels is the first card that we draw during the turn, we can pay the alternate miracle cost during our draw step of just X and double white to still make those same X 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying, which of course is very undercosted. Besides Entreat the Angels, we also have four copies of Terminus as our other miracle card in a deck, which if we can miracle it, just costs a single white mana to put all creatures on the bottom of their owner's library, and of course a one mana sweeper effect is very very powerful. And the reason why we can play these miracle cards all of a sudden is thanks to the printing of a Riverwise Augur in Rivals of Ixalan, which gives us a brainstorm effect in modern, so we can draw three cards and then put two cards from our hand back on top of our library. So if we did draw any miracle cards before, we can just put them on top of our deck and set up these powerful miracle draws. And the cool thing about miracle cards is that they also work during the opponent's turn, so if we have a way to draw cards at instant speed, we can still play our miracle cards during the opponent's turn. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have 4 copies of Path to Exile as our cheap removal spell of choice. Exile is a creature, the opponent does get a land in return, but we're also running some land destruction in our deck, so we can make sure that the opponent's basic lands are quickly going to run out. Then we also have 4 copies of Opt to scry one and then draw a card. This card is very powerful because it is an instant speed way to draw cards, so we can use this to set up our miracle cards during the opponent's turn, and the scry one can also be very useful. Then we also have four copies of Serum Visions, which is great in this deck, letting us draw a card and then scry two. And of course, scrying is very powerful with miracle cards, since if you see a miracle card on top, you can set up a very powerful miracle on the following turn, or even during the opponent's turn if you have a way to draw at instant speed. Then we have one copy of Sensor as a cheap counter spell that can also be cycled for a single blue, so that's another way to draw at instant speed. Then we have two copies of Mana Leak as an additional cheap counter spell, so counters a spell unless the opponent can pay three. And then we also have two copies of Search for Ascanta, which is now a staple in blue control decks in modern, giving us some card selection early on, and then flipping into the Sunken Ruin, giving us a lot of card advantage that we can use at instant speed. Then we also have four copies of Snapcaster Mage, which is great in any deck with a lot of instants and sorceries. Then we have four copies of Telling Time, which lets us take a look at the top three cards. We can put one into our hand, one stays on top of our library and one goes on the bottom. This doesn't actually let us draw the card, so this doesn't work with our Miracle cards, but we can still set up Miracle cards by leaving a Miracle card on top of our deck. Then of course the four copies of Riverwise Augur. One copy of Cryptic Command, which is great and very versatile, letting us counter spells, return permanence, tap all the opponent's creatures, or simply draw a card. And then our Miracle cards, four Terminus and two Entreaty Angels, which is our main win condition in the deck. The other win condition in the deck is our four copies of Celestial Colonnade, which can turn into a 4-4 creature with Flying and Vigilance. Then we have four copies of Field of Ruin, giving us some land destruction against non-basic lands. We have a total of 6 fetch lands, 4 flooded strands and 2 polluted delta. The polluted delta can just be any blue fetch land. Then 2 shock lands to go get with our fetch lands, along with a total of 7 basics, 4 islands and 3 planes, which we can go get with our fetch lands, but we also need them for field of ruin to search up a basic. And then also 1 mystic gate to further fix our mana, very useful in combination with cryptic command or entreaty angels. And then taking a quick look at our sideboard, we have some Hateful Enchantments, two Stony Silence against Artifact decks and two Rest in Peace against Graveyard decks. Some additional counter spells, we have two Dispels, two Counter Instants, we have a Disdainful Stroke to counter expensive cards, and three Negates to counter non-creature spells. Then we also have one copy of Blast Alliance, which is great against decks like Grixis Death Shadow as a removal spell that can also maybe get rid of Death Shadows by making the opponent gain for life, or we can also bring it in against burn decks to gain for life ourselves. We have a Disenchant to deal with artifacts or enchantments. Then we also have an Aether Sworn Canonist, which is great against Storm decks. A Vendillion Click, which is good against control decks as a threat that can also disrupt the opponent. 
And we also have an additional Entreaty Angels in the sideboard for when we think our opponent can handle the first two copies of Entreat and we might need a third copy to maybe close out the game with. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw and this hand looks acceptable. We're missing white mana but we do have some early plays here to sculpt our hand and then the Augur to put the Entreat back on top. Bloodstained Mire for Blood Crypt into Inquisition. So that's gonna see our hand here. Can take the Entreat since Converted Mana cost us 3. Alright, so we drew a Colonnade which I guess we'll play here over Islands for Opt. This does give our opponent full information but we do need to play that Colonnade at some point. So might as well do it now. Second Inquisition. Might take Snapcaster, yep. Well, don't really mind the start from the opponent. They're not really pressuring us and we were weak to an early creatures given that we didn't have any counter spells or removal spells in hand. So let's go Island Go. And then the plan is to Telling Time end of turn. Young Pyromancer resolves. At some point we'll find a Terminus to clean up all of the elemental tokens. And a tapped Sacred Foundry as well. Telling Time finds Snapcaster, Serum Visions, Flood of Strand. These are all decent, so let's draw the Snapcaster and the Serum Visions. And I think we just Serum Visions right now, and then perhaps use Snapcaster as an Ambush Viper. So let's cast Serum Visions. Those are both interesting, but I think we want to bottom them and look for one of our Miracle cards. Drew into another Serum Visions. I guess if we want to opt on Serum Visions, we might as well shuffle first, which makes playing that first Serum Visions kind of bad, since now we're shuffling those two cards we put on the bottom back into our deck. But we didn't know we were going to draw another Serum Visions. Otherwise, we probably would have fetched first. So let's Serum Visions again. And there's a Terminus, perfect. So let's top Terminus and then top the planes on top of that. And then we can kind of wait and see if we need to opt to Terminus next turn or if we can take a hit from this Young Pyromancer and then Terminus a turn later when the opponent might have played more creatures like potential Lingering Souls. can also set up opts to end of turn Terminus next turn. So now we drop to 17 and looks like we can just untap here. Draw the planes, so we'll just play Field of Ruin, say go. Don't want a Field of Ruin and shuffle away the Terminus but uh, it's a good one to have in play, as this might force our opponent to maybe cast a Lingering Souls right away, since otherwise their Sacred Foundry might get destroyed. Looks like our opponent is happy just getting in for two. Alright, I think we'll end of turn Terminus here just to get rid of the Young Pyromancer, just so we have all our mana for next turn to play the Augur if we want to. What we could have also considered here is uh, in response to the trigger, activate Field of Ruin, get rid of the Sacred Foundry, get a Plains and then use that to cast a Terminus. Probably would have been better here for us. Draw a Colonnade. So I think it's fine to just play the Augur here. Our opponent with Colagon's Command in response. So they force us to discard. I guess we'll discard uh, Field of Ruin here. And another Terminus. I guess we can leave on top. So let's stop Terminus and then put an island on top of that. Since we might not want to draw the Terminus right away. Then play Colonnade. And say go. And there's Bedlam Reveler drawing the opponent three cards. We'll draw for a turn. And I think we'll just play this Mystic Gate and say go. Could attack with Colonnade, but I would rather keep up Snapcaster. There's Inquisition, so I guess the jig is up here. So we can Snapcaster, target Telling Time, and then let the Inquisition resolve. Maybe even chump with the Snapcaster Mage and then cast Telling Time end of turn. Opponent with Colagon's commands to 
kill the Snapcaster and make us discard. Alright, that's fine. So we'll take 5 damage and we'll discard Island. And your opponent says go. We'll cast the Telling Time now. And Mana Leak, Path and Terminus. So we'll draw the Path and then put the Terminus on top. And then Miracle this Terminus. Get rid of the Reveler. And I think we do play out our planes here, even though that exposes Path to getting discarded by Colgan's command. And I think we might as well use Field of Ruin right now on the Sacred Foundry. Get ourselves an island. Alright. There's Young Pyromancer. And Collective Brutality making us discard, we're just gonna path in response. Opponent does still get an elemental token, but at least the brutality doesn't do anything. And our opponent has Battle Reveler as their last card, as is usually the case. They get to draw three new cards. And there's Entreat right on time. Make five Angel tokens. And their opponent's going to have a hard time overcoming those. There's no Lingering Souls in the graveyard and they can't cast it from hand, so they would need a way to discard Lingering Souls to put up some blockers. And their opponent scoops it up, alright. On to sideboarding against Mardu Pyromancer, so we definitely want to rest in pieces here. And... Uh, do we want anything else? Click is pretty bad against Lingering Souls. I could see adding an Entreat since their opponent's pretty heavy on the discard. And given that we bring in Rest in Peace, I could see shaving uh, a Snapcaster Mage. And Path to Exile is also pretty weak against the opponent. I would rather have Terminus. So maybe this configuration is fine. Could also consider this Daneful Stroke to counter a Reveler. Maybe that's better than a Mana Leak or a Sensor. Negate and Dispel also have their merits. But I don't want to over sideboard here. And this is an interesting opening hand, which I think we can keep given that we have opt to find a second land. And rest in peace should be pretty powerful if our opponent doesn't make us discard it. And if they do, we get to set up another powerful enchantment in search for Ascanta. Just a tapped Sacred Foundry, don't mind seeing that. We drew a mana leak, so it's pretty important that we find a second land here. So let's take two. And there's a Black Leaf Cliffs, but no play from the opponent, so let's opt end of turn. Mana Leak on the bottom. Drew a Telling Time. Can we find a second land? We cannot. Alright, this is awkward. So we can't cast the Entreat, and uh, we actually have to discard to hand size here. I guess we can get rid of a Disdainful Stroke. And there's Young Pyromancer. Get to untap, and there's a second land. All right, so we're back in business. So I think we just jam this rest in peace while we still can. Dust shut off for search for Ascanta, but search for Ascanta can still provide some card selection. Opponent's gonna bolt us to make a token with the Pyromancer. That's fine. So I don't expect our opponent to have brought in any enchantment removal. There's a Lingering Souls, so we just need to find a Terminus before our opponent kills us with what they have in play here. And they could very well kill us before we get to it, since we also need to hit land drops. But hopefully our Telling Times can help. Alright, Field of Ruin. So is there a reason to cast Telling Time right now? Can't really think of any reason, so let's just play Field of Ruin, say go. Opponent hits us for 6, down to 6, so we do need to find that Terminus right away here. And Inquisition, we can let Resolve since we have a second Telling Time, and we're gonna need to hit 
a terminus regardless. And they end up taking mana leak. And forked bolt to put us to four. Yeah, that works. They could just end up burning us out with a bunch of Kologans commands, but can't do much about it. There's a terminus, so let's see here. I guess we want the serum visions over the opt. So let's draw the serum visions and then put terminus on top. Untap. Surprise, surprise. Miracle terminus. And I think with the trigger on the stack, we want to use Field of Ruin on the Sacred Foundry, I guess. That way we can get a Plains, and then we have both blue and white mana available instead of these two colorless Field of Ruins. And now we can pay for the Terminus. And say go. Opponent with just land go. Polluted Delta the draw. Do need to be careful about fetching because of Lightning Bolt. So we have an interesting decision. We could fetch, play the Augur, and then next turn set up the Entreat for two, which puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. I think that's actually our best bet here. Sure, we could die to a Lightning Bolt, but we're probably going to get burnt out by that Lightning Bolt regardless. We're not dead to a Kologans command. And this way we get to set up this Entreat. Alright, so I think we just want to Entreat right away. Put Augur on top, put Entreat on top of that. And say go. Boron just says go. And we're gonna make two Angels. And then I guess we can play the Flooded Strand, but I'm not planning on using it anytime soon. Opponent has Terminate for an Angel, that's fine. Surprise, their opponent still has that after sideboard. We'll attack for two. And say go. Faithless Looting can uh, find them the missing burn spells. I guess a Young Pyromancer from the opponent would be decent as well here. And instead of Fatal Push for the Angel token, alright. So we might have to win with Riverwise Augur beatdown. And start by attacking for two. And then play another Augur. And there's another Entreat, perfect. So don't really want this other Rest in Peace, put Entreat on top. And be ready to Miracle again next turn. Again, only making two tokens to play around Kologan's command, dealing two damage to kill us. Dreadbore on an Augur, yep. Alright, let's Miracle again. Get in for two, and their opponent scoops it up. Awesome, so managed to beat a Mardu Pyromancer with a timely Terminus and then a few timely Entreat the Angels, which we could set up thanks to the Augur. And rest in peace, might have done a lot of work here, don't really get to know what our opponent had in hand, but I expect they had a few Battle Revelers sitting there. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand looks okay. A uh, bit weak on the draw perhaps, since we have these two counter spells, and our opponent can easily play something uh, through these counter spells before we get to cast them. But I don't think we can mulligan this hand. Probably gonna end up cycling the sensor right away, we'll see. Terminus, let's not miracle that one. And I think we can just play a tapped hallowed fountain, I guess. Could also play Flood of Strand to get an island to cycle sensor, but. I think I'm just going to play a tapped fountain. Opponent with Bloodstained Mire getting a Sacred Foundry. So it looks like a Red White or Mardu deck potentially. But they're just stuck on one land, interesting. <laughs> Another Miracle card, bits early for those. So let's just uh, play Field of Ruin and say go. And then keep up Sensor and Mana Leak. 
which are pretty effective when your opponent's stuck on one land. Opponent just says go. Not really gonna cycle the sensor yet. Serum Visions is fine, however, so we can fetch an island. Play Serum Visions. And Search for Ascanta is nice, so it's Path to Exile potentially. I think I'm gonna bottom the path here. And I think I'll top the search. Even though I would like to find more land. But search is just such a powerful card if we can transform it. And with these counter spells we should be able to prolong the game to a point where we can transform it. If our opponent doesn't play anything worth countering we can just telling time end of turn. Instead our opponent with Cathartic Reunion discarding Angel of Glory's Rise. And Stinkweed Imp so it looks like some sort of dredge deck. I'm fine just censoring this. Not letting the opponent dredge with the draw from Cathartic Reunion since they discarded the Stinkweed Imp. But the opponent can start dredging next turn. Draw or Search but kind of want to keep up this Mana Leak as well. So this was the awkward thing about keeping the Search for Ascanta without the fourth land. I think we probably still want to just cast the Search, get our engine rolling, get some card selection and uh, let the opponent do whatever they want here for a turn. I guess this goes back all the way to turn 1, where we decided not to cycle the sensor. Had we cycled sensor, perhaps we would have found a fourth land by now. But then uh, we would have had to use a mana leak on the reunion, so we wouldn't have had any counter spells up here. Opponent with Tormenting Voice now. Discarding Undercity Informer, so that can also be part of some uh, combo. I remember the Informer and Angel of Glory's Rise being part of some sort of standard reanimator deck back in the day. So if I remember correctly, the way this used to work is the opponent tries to mill a whole bunch of humans in their graveyard, then they cast an Unburial Rites, reanimating their Angel of Glory's Rise, returning all sorts of humans back into play. And among those humans is a Fiend Hunter which can exile the Angel of Glory's Rise, then they also need an Undercity Informer, which can be used as a sacrifice outlet and also as a win condition. And all they need then is also a way to generate mana, which can be something like a Burning Tree Emissary when it enters the battlefield. And then they can use the mana from the Burning Tree to activate the Undercity Informer, to sacrifice the Burning Tree Emissary and the Fiend Hunter, which has the Angel of Glory's Rise underneath. And then the Angel will trigger again, returning the Fiend Hunter and the Burning Tree Emissary making more mana. And that way they get an infinite amount of Undercity Informer triggers, which basically can just mill out an opponent. So I think that's what the opponent is trying to accomplish here. What does Ascanta reveal? A land. Definitely want to draw that. So let's play land, say go. And then we can Telling Time and Mana Leak. Or Snapcaster Sensor. So our opponent didn't dredge with their Stinkweed Imp, so they might have some other plans instead. Opponent does now dredge. A Wild Canter goes to the graveyard. And an Unburial Rites as well. We do have some counter spells to counter the Rites. Opponent with another Cathartic Reunion. They dredge some more. Alright, that's fine. I think we just telling time, end of turn. And then keep the fetch to potentially shuffle. I guess we draw the opt. And then, do we want the path or not? I think we would rather just draw the field of ruin. So we can opt into the field of ruin here. Just to spend our mana. And then we can shuffle, get a hallowed fountain. So we can Cryptic and potentially Miracle an Entreat. Alright, search for Ascanta. Finds Field of Ruin. I think we can put that one in the graveyard just to try and transform the Ascanta right now. Draw Celestial Colonnade. If we play Field of Ruin we can Mana Leak and still activate Ascanta. I think that's worth it here over playing the Colonnade. And at some point we can start using the Field of Ruins on our opponent, but it looks like they have plenty of basics. So for now we will just hold on to our counter spells. Another Tormenting Voice. 
I guess we can just use Ascanta. Take a look, see if we find more counter spells. Serum Visions and Path. I guess we take the Serum Visions here. Since we haven't really seen any creatures we need to exile quite yet. And I think I'm okay with leaking the Tormenting Voice here. And then next turn we can maybe start using Snapcasters to counter stuff and put some pressure in play. Draw an Entreat. Well, I guess we can just cast the Entreat. Although, let's see, it does leave the window open for Unburial Rites if our opponent finds land number 4. So I don't think we actually Miracle the Entreat. So let's just play a Tapped Colonnade. Cast the Serum Visions. Look for a Riverwise Augur at this point. And there's the Augur, perfect. I think we can bottom both here since we want to find spells with Ascanta if we end up using it. And say go for now, hold on to Snapcaster plus Leak. Opponent with another Tormenting Voice. Yeah, I think we actually let them have it at this point. Another Angel of Glory's Rise goes to the graveyard. So we have a few options, we can Snapcaster plus uh, Telling Time just to find a land so that we can next turn play the Augur and still keep up Snapcaster plus Counterspell, or we can just use Ascanta. I think I like just using Ascanta here. Find the Telling Time. Draw Colonnade. So, it's pretty likely that we draw into a land with the Augur. But it's pretty risky if we don't, since then we don't get to keep up Snapcaster plus Counterspell, so I think I'm gonna play it safe. Just play this Tapped Colonnade for now, and then say go, and then next turn we can play the Augur, and a turn after maybe Miracle and Entreat. Opponent mills over some more cards, Faithless looting one of them, and more Angels of Glory's Rise. Another Tormenting Voice, sure. Fiend Hunter goes to the graveyard, along with more Wild Canters. Alright, that's all fine. So I guess now we can use a Field of Ruin. Let's see if they have more basics. Alright, they have a Swamp, so maybe we inadvertently fix their mana here. Uh, let's use Ascanta. Find a Cryptic Command. Draw Mana Leak, so let's cast the Augur here. And land is good, so let's just put the two Entreats on top. Play Flooded Strand, but we're not planning on sacrificing it. And we get to say go, even have to discard to hand size here. I guess we can get rid of either a telling time or a path to exile. Let's keep the path to exile just to be safe. Alright, land number four, so they can finally start casting on burial rites. Alright, let's snapcaster plus mana leak here, or I guess we can even censor. Although maybe they have a Simeon Spirit Guide, so I guess we'll play it safe and uh, flash back the Mana Leak here. Cast Mana Leak. And here we're just gonna entreat for a small amount that still leaves up at least one counter spell, so let's reveal Entreat. And then how much do we want to cast it for is a question. I guess if we cast it for two, that's already enough. Yeah, that seems fine. That still leaves up Cryptic without having to shuffle away the second Entreat. Now we get to get in for four. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, onto sideboarding against a Reanimator deck. So, probably want our Rest in Peace. Could see Negate being good here. Could see Cleek being good. And that's about it, I think. So let's bring these in. And path seem pretty bad. I think we can shave two terminus and just get rid of all the path. 
Uh, something like this should be okay. And we open up with a decent hand. Don't have any graveyard hate, but we do have a search for Ascanta so we can uh, get our own powerful graveyard engine going. Then the gate should stop any Umbarial rides from happening right away. And then the Augur can set up some miracles. Opponent leads with Bloodstain Mire into a tapped Sacred Foundry. We drew an Opt, but I think I'm just fine playing a tapped Colonnade here. And then we have to decide whether or not we want to play the Ascanta on 2, or if we want to keep up Opt and Negate and then play the Ascanta on 4. Cathartic Reunion, discarding Mountain and another Reunion. That's fine. I think I'm okay with playing out one of these Ascantas. So let's use one of our fetch lands, that way we get to transform Ascanta a little sooner. Get an island. Play Ascanta. Say go. And uh, I guess our deck, the way it's configured after sideboard, is just weak to our opponent casting a random creature out of their hand, like the Undercity Informer since we took out all our paths and only kept in two terminus. But uh, yeah, it looks like our opponent's mana base isn't really all that well suited to actually casting the black cards from their hand. And they discard an informer and a stinkweed imp and defense grid. Yeah, that's definitely an issue since that makes our counter spells a lot worse. In fact, that makes most of our cards a lot worse so, let's see what we reveal. Entreat the Angels cannot miracle it, but we do have an Augur in hand, so we can set up the miracle for in a couple turns. So for now, what's our plan? I guess we can fetch uh, planes here, and then cast an Opt. Try and find a Rest in Peace. Find Field of Ruin on top. Yeah, I don't think we need that. Find another opt which we can cast. And there's rest in peace, alright. So we have a plan for next turn. So I guess our Ascanta is not going to transform, but if we can resolve rest in peace, I'm happy. So looks like there's no Umbarial Rites in the graveyard at the moment, so could be that uh, we don't have to fear a reanimation spell quite yet. Opponent just flashes back Faithless Looting, puts Fiend Hunter, Tormenting Voice and Defense Grid in Graveyard. Another Search for Ascanta can go to the Graveyard. And I think we're just jamming this Rest in Peace. Could be more patient and maybe get more value out of it. And maybe try to transform the Search first. But uh, we're just gonna play it safe. Play Rest in Peace. Hope they don't have an answer. And that might just be game if that's the case. Alright, let's see if our opponent can win through a rest in peace. And now that we picked up Entreaty Angels, I'm not that worried about our opponent just casting random creatures from their hand, since we can just overpower them with a bunch of angel tokens. Another Cathartic Reunion. And a Dagmore Salvage. And another Reunion, that's all fine opponent with three cards that they drew from the reunion in hand. We could technically keep up negates and cast it through the defense grid next turn, but we're just gonna cast the auger and set up this entreat. Hallowed Fountain can go to the graveyard, draw a colonnade, so that's good here since we can play the auger and play the colonnade. Alright, draw another rest in peace as insurance. Snapcaster is not gonna be great. So I guess we put back Snapcaster and then Entreat on top of the Snapcaster. Could wait on this Entreat and make it bigger, but don't really see a reason to. An Entreat for 3 should be plenty. I guess we have 14 power, so it's not exactly a 2 turn clock, but I guess with Colonnade it is. So our opponent just spinning their wheels with all their tormenting voices and cathartic reunions. And even if they can get rid of Rest in Peace, they have an empty graveyard, so they would have to rebuild that first. So I'm not too worried about 
having to play a second rest in peace just to be safe since by the time they uh, set up a dangerous graveyard they're probably dead to our angel tokens. Fiend Hunter can exile the Augur, that's fine. So now their opponent took some damage from their lands, the angels and the colonnade is still lethal. Search for Ascanta, we're not gonna mill the Entreat here, and then we will Miracle. X equals 3. And we still get to play our land, say go. Faithless looting, draw to discard 2, and that does it, sweet, so rest in peace. Very good against reanimator decks as it turns out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks acceptable. We're missing some interaction, but we have some early library manipulation, so hopefully we can find the right interaction, and then the augur can set up a miracle if we find one of those. Opponent with the mountain into faithless looting. Discarding two Vengevines and Simeon Spirit Guide casts Insulin Neonate. And her opponent gets back two Vengevines after casting a Memnite as well. Wow. So it's kind of the nut draw from the opponent here. So Vengevine says when opponent casts a spell, if it's the second creature spell, they can return it from the graveyard. And Memnite costs zero mana, so they were able to play two creatures here getting back the two Vengevines. So we basically need a miracle right away. But uh, it can't be this turn since we don't have the white mana for Terminus. Mana leak. I don't think is gonna do it here. So let's put that on the bottom. Draw step is Hallowed Fountain. So yeah, I think we're just gonna try to set up a Terminus here. So let's play planes, say go. We're gonna take 10 down to 2, so if they have a lightning bolt we're dead. And uh, otherwise we can hope to set up a Terminus next turn. Opponent sags a neonate right away, discarding a become immense. Opponent can hit us for 9. Yeah, that's gonna work. So lightning bolt kills us. Instead another looting. Discarding a Rampager and another Neonate, so end of turn, telling time. We know what we're looking for, and there it is, awesome. So, I uh, guess we want the second Augur in hand, and then we'll put Terminus on top. Untap, draw, reveal Terminus, and cast it for a single white mana. And Vengevines go to the bottom of the opponent's library, so even better than destroying them in this spot. And I guess we're just playing a tapped colonnade. Saying go. And uh, be at the mercy of our opponent's hand here. And there it is, Lightning Bolt to the face. Oh well, at least we did get to Terminus away those Vengevines. So onto sideboarding against another deck that relies on the graveyard. So we're definitely interested in our two copies of Rest in Peace. Vanillion Click seems okay here since it can actually block a Vengevine. Blast Alliance could be okay. I don't think we want anything else in particular. I could see Shaving a Surge or even two since they might be a bit slow in this matchup and they kind of conflict with Rest in Peace. And then maybe we can Shave a Sensor. And this hand seems okay. I mean, we don't have any Path to Exiles or other interaction. But I'm not gonna mulligan a hand with Serum Vision, Snapcaster, a bunch of lands and Augur. Our opponent mulligans to 5. They do have a pretty high variance stack after all. Uh, could play Serum Visions right away here, or we can play a tapped Colonnade. I think I like playing the Visions right away. Try and look for an early Rest in Peace. And Treat is not gonna do it here. So let's bottom that. I will top the Visions, so next turn we can play Colonnade and Visions. And then on 3 we can Snapcaster plus Serum Visions. 
So let's serum visions first. And Terminus. Definitely not interested in the Colonnade. And I guess we can keep the Terminus on top, even if we don't cast it next turn. Just to have it with the Augur, we can put it back on top and have access to it. We can always upkeep Telling Time if we really don't want to draw it. Here we see a Burning Tree Emissary from the opponent into Reckless Bushwhacker. Alright, so this Terminus is going to be great. So it could be actually that our opponent sideboarded out some of their graveyard pieces just to avoid graveyard hate in sideboarded games. And sideboarded into more of a zoo style bushwhacker deck. But Terminus is great against both. So let's cast it. And we can still telling time. So let's play the planes, say go. So let's cast Telling Time. And Rest in Peace seems okay, even though we do have the Snapcaster. Yeah, I think we do still put it in hand, even though the opponent might have taken out a few of their graveyard cards. And then I guess we take the Mystic Gate. So I guess we can Snapcaster Serum Visions before needing to play the Rest in Peace. Do we want to fetch first with the Polluted Delta or not? I don't think so, since we might end up drawing something like a Path to Exile that we want to cast. So let's make some blue mana, play a Snapcaster, target Serum Visions, and then cast it with Flashback, and another Terminus on top. I'm actually okay drawing both here, so let's put the Colonnade as our first draw. And then we can still opt as well here if we want to, but I don't think we will end up casting the opt unless we need access to Terminus sooner. So draw, find Colonnade. All right, so what now? We can play the Augur, set up the Terminus once again, uh, but I guess we can start by attacking for two. So we could just play the Rest in Peace here, or we can play Augur and then maybe shuffle away the Rest in Peace if we think it's not needed. I think I'm gonna play it safe here and just cast the Rest in Peace in case our opponent's sandbagging some of their graveyard cards. We can still opt into Terminus at instant speed, should we need it. Opponent just casts Lightning Bolt, that's fine. So I guess we can opt and scry the Terminus to the bottom here, since it doesn't look like we'll need it. Draw into another colonnade. So here we can Augur and Serum Visions. So let's play the Augur first. That way Serum Visions can scry at least one of the cards we put on top to the bottom if we don't like it. And here, kind of like most of our cards, could also use a fetch land to shuffle, I guess. So let's put back a fetch land. And I don't think we'll need another colonnade here. And then we can play the fetch, fetch right now for an island. Cast Serum Visions. And there's Entreat, perfect. So bottom of the island, top of the Entreat. Could have also decided to put the island on top. That way we could have used Opt to Entreat in the opponent's turn at instant speed to play around potential removal spells from the opponent for the Entreat, but I doubt they'll have anything. And our opponent's hand is just two Mandrills and a Neonate, so looks like the Rest in Peace worked out fine there. Uh, do we want to reconsider anything? No, I think I liked our configuration here. This hand is not particularly great. Um, Entreat is not going to do much for the time being, don't have any paths, and only an Opt. So I think we can do better. All right, this is a little better, I guess. And Colonnade can stay on top, since we can play that turn one, being on the draw. Can easily die to a quick start from the opponent, but at least we get to play some cards here. Opponent again with looting, discarding two Vengevines, so I'm pretty terrified at this point. 
So let's play a tapped colonnade and I guess pray for a timely terminus. Does her opponent get back to Vengevines? Not yet at least. Just another looting. Opponent discards another looting and a spirit guide and they're casting Memnite which is not a good sign here for us. Second Memnite gets back both Vengevines. Alright, so we have a turn or two here to Miracle a Terminus. Let's draw, find Serum Visions. So let's think here, what gives us a better chance of Miracling a Terminus? So the random draw from Serum Visions does nothing for us, so we're just looking at Scry 2. So I guess Stelling Time gives us a higher chance of actually finding the Terminus as opposed to Serum Visions, so we should probably just rely on Telling Time here. The only argument for Serum Visions is that it can draw us into a path to exile to maybe buy us some time. But we're already taking 10 here. Had we drawn path to exile, we would have taken 6. We're still dead to a bolt or a pump spell. And our opponent with become immense for the turn 3 kill here. Alright, good beats. Let's see if we were going to draw the terminus. <laughs> we actually were. Wow, so we would have been able to sweep the opponent's board on 3, but that's just not fast enough as it turns out. So good beats. Draw the planes, put Terminus on top, and that will do it. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.